All right, hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me, it's Original Gamer Stevie Stroh, and I am joined by David Ladd. Say hello, David. Hello, everyone. What are we going to do today? We're going to talk about this, the Coco SDC. I'm going to talk about what it is, what it does, and I'm going to go through the process to not only upgrade the firmware, but to add a new program that is called the Coco SDC Explorer. So this is a picture of what the Coco SDC looks like, and there'll be a link to this in the in the description of this video. And so the Coco SDC is a card you plug into your color computer, and it emulates a floppy disk drive, and it lets you use a normal standard SD card to load uh, software into your color computer. So basically, you would take a disk image, which is like a virtual floppy disk, and you can store those disk images into folders or directories on an SD card. You can then mount those into your color computer and they look and act like a real floppy drive. You can then load software from these and run them on your real Coco. So it's kind of like bridging the gap between what you would do on an emulator and real hardware. The Coco SDC is a, uh, a controller card you can now buy from Ed Snyder. Ed Snyder Snyder's also known as the Zipster. I will have a link to the purchasing site for this as well. I think you have to uh, email Ed. Now the Coco SDC by itself costs $40. But you also need to get a 3D printed case for it. So yeah, John Strong um, is the guy who makes the 3D printed cases for all the various Coco projects, right? So he's got a 3D printed case for just about everything. He's got one for the uh, MC10 expander, RGB to VGA cases. Um, he's got just, you know... So Ed, uh, uh, Ed Snyder is the guy who makes most of the hardware, and John Strong is the guy who makes most of the printed cases. So there will be links to these in this video. And there will be links to these on my page as well. So if you go to my website, ogstevistro.com, I've put together links down here. And I've tried to explain what these things are. So like, for example, the Zipster Zone is what takes you to Ed Snyder, who makes the Coco SDC and the Mini MPI and things like that. You can get a link here to the Coco SDC. You can get a link over here to John Strong's Strongware, which does 3D printed cases. John also makes software and games and things like that. So I've tried to update my links page to be a little bit more um, explanatory here. This is the Color Computer Archive where we're going to go to get um, the Coco Explorer. Also from the Coco uh, SDC page, this is where you can get the latest firmware. The one thing you have to do with uh, your Coco SDC is you have to manage your SD card on your actual real computer. So I've just got this little USB SD card reader. So I will stick the SD card in here. And then I will then stick this into my computer. I'm going to open up my Coco SDC card right now, which doesn't have a lot of folders. It's got Dragon, Games for the Color Computer 2, Games for the Color Computer 3, and Utilities. I have downloaded already now. Here's Coco SDC Explorer by Guillaume Major. And he's also given you um, a README file telling you how to use this file, which is over here. And I've kind of read it, and I mostly remember a lot of it, but I don't know. Reading's not my thing, right? So. I'm going to take the SDC here and I'm going to stick that on the SD drive. Here we go. So this one's called SDC Setup from April 16th of 2017. This is the latest version of that. I'm going to drag that onto the SD card and I've now got these two files here. Now I want to look I want to look for one more thing on here. Um, one of the things they talk about is you, the ability to make things automatically load right so startup configuration file so this is telling you to create a file called startup config and which disk image you want to load on here so I want to try to do that right now too I want to try to make this thing automatically start up um, so where the heck did my Coco SDC card go alright so the, the name of the file is called uh, startup.cfg. So I'm going to do a new text file. New. Come on, computer. Text file. And I'm going to say, okay, it has to be all caps, startup.cfg. Okay, and now inside here, I am going to create the file that says, okay, zero equals um, s sdcx.dsk which is basically saying I want to automatically mount this disk 
and to drive zero. Let me go ahead and do this here too. I'm going to say one equals um, SDC setup dot DSK because I'm going to need that too to set up my Coco. So I'm basically telling my Coco SDC to look for a startup config file. It's going to automatically mount in disk zero the uh, Coco SDC Explorer program and in disk one it's going to automatically mount the Coco SDC setup program that I'm going to use to uh, update my firmware. Yeah, I was about to say, since you created a text file, you might have to show extensions and remove the .txt off the end of that. That's a good good uh, observation there, Dren Core. That's what you got me here for. So I need to file name extensions. Yep, you are right, Dren Core. I have to turn on file name extensions and make sure there's not a .txt at the end of that. So the actual name of the file needs to be called startup.cfg. Making sure that's in line with what the uh, website says. Yes, startup.cfg um, after you've renamed that. So I had to go into my view here and I had to say show me file name extensions and that way I could rename it and get rid of the .txt at the end of that text file. Good call there, Drencore. You're welcome, sir. All right. So now we are going to take this thing and we're going to put this thing and we're going to stick it inside the Coco SDC thing here. Okay, so now the SD card is in the Coco SDC. So I'm now taking this and putting this in my Coco 3, sticking it in the side cartridge slot of the Coco 3. Boom. And here we go. Now, there's where we can see what my current version of my um, Coco SDC DOS is right now. So I'm running Coco SDC DOS. 1.2 and it does know that I have a Coco 3. What I should see right away is if I type in dir, this is the um, Coco SDCX. This is the program. And so this is automatically mounted in drive zero because if I do a dir slash to look at the actual SD card, okay. Um, so I have SDCX.DSK, um, I have the SDC setup.dsk, and then I also have the startup.cfg. That startup CFG now mounted in Coco Explorer in Drive Zero. So when I type in dir, I automatically see this disk here. If I type in Drive One and I type in dir, this is the program to flash the Coco BIOS, right, in the Coco SDC. So I need to update the firmware in my SDC, and I need to update my version of DOS in here too. So I'm going to run setup and I am going to upgrade my Coco SDC. And this is the setup program that you can download from the Coco SDC website, which I've put a, which I have on my website and I put a link I will put a link in this video. When you hit V for version, right now this is showing me that my current um, firmware in my SDC card is 1. Dot, is 1.16 and my DOS version is 1.2. It's also showing you what bank it's in. It's in bank zero. And we're going to go ahead and reflash the same bank number, but there's like there's eight banks that you can load different ROM images into in your Coco SDC. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to update it from version 116 to 117. So I'm going to hit F to update the firmware. It's going to validate the file. Very cool. And now what it's saying is, is that the firmware version that's going to be installed is 117. Press Y to proceed. Any other key to cancel. So I hit Y. Do not interrupt the operation. This is just like flashing a computer's uh, firmware right now, too. So it's like flashing the BIOS in an old computer or updating your firmware EFI in your modern PC or Mac. It's flashing this. It's going straight across the world. And bada bing, bada boom. Once it does that, it automatically reboots. Now you notice that the SDC DOS version hasn't changed just yet because I haven't flashed that. If I switch back over to drive one and I do a dir and now I run setup um, and I do a view display it's showing me now that my firmware is updated to 117 but my DOS is still 1.2 and that's in bank zero. I'm going to press any key. I'm going to press D to update DOS from 1.2 to the latest version which is 1.4. So I hit D for DOS. It's going to load the image and it's now going to say we are going to load um, version 1.4 what bank. I'm going to go ahead and hit bank 0 and actually rewrite the same bank that I'm in right now and press Y for yes. It's going to write it and then it's going to reboot again. When it's done I'm rebooting and look at this. Boom! The new version of DOS 
automatically notes that you have the Coco SDC Explorer in Drive Zero and it launches Coco SDC Explorer. So now I am auto booting. So let's try this again. If I turn off my Coco, Coco is off, and I turn my Coco back on. You see a little spinning cursor there for a second, and boom. So what did the new um, firmware do, and what did the new um, DOS ROM upgrade just do, is it's now looking for the presence of the Coco SDC Explorer, which is um, now, you know, it's now a thing to go along with the Coco SDC. It's like this is hardware and software talking to each other, right? So uh, I can't use my computer keyboard. I have to use my Coco keyboard. So, for example, this is a Coco 3. Is it just enter to highlight a directory? Yep. Um, it's, yep. It's sorting the directory. And then I know there's other keys that you can use to, like, mount the image and, and all that kind of stuff. And I forgot what they were. Um... And I think it was shift down will um, page up and page down. Now, so shift up and shift down will page up and page down. Now, this is a heck of a lot better um, than, uh, than, you know, the old way of doing things. That's pretty cool. And it automatically sorts it, which, unfortunately, the way the Coco SDC was is that if your files were not sorted as they were put on the SD card, they showed up in whatever random order um, when you did a dir through your Coco SDC. Now, of course, now I have to do a little bit of reading. That thing I don't like to do because I don't remember what all the keys were. So let me go back to my downloads folder. Well, it has a shift H that you can use to uh, give you in program help. Oh, look at you, Drinkor. Shift H, there we go. So I can create a disk, I can make a directory, I can rename a disk, I can mount a directory. Okay. Um, and then toggle sorting, and then shift one is to mount and, un and unmount disk and drive one. Um, shift one. Okay, so is it so it's shift M to mount directory, shift up page up page down. S oh, select by file name. All right. Shift C is to create a disk. Shift K is to create a directory. Shift R is to rename a disk or directory. Shift X is to delete a disk or directory. Shift M is to mount a directory with multi disks. So if there's there's um, if there's more than one disk image in that directory, it'll mount the the directory folder, and you can press the side button on your Coco SDC to swap floppies. Shift F is to refresh the directory. Shift one is to unmount um, drive one on the Coco. Shift two is to unmount drive two, which is for the Dragon version. Um, now, how do we navigation keys are left and right to switch between windows. Shift up and down is page up and down. Shift left and right is like home and end. A through Z will be the next file matching up to four square characters. And then how do you launch the actual disk when you're there? Once you've mounted the disk, how do you launch it? Do you have to get out of it and then run it like a normal disk, or can you have it automatically execute what's in the disk? Nope. Um, when you uh, use the arrow keys, um, the left and right will let you switch between the left and right menus. Mm -hmm. And then you, if you go into like a directory, find a program, hit the image that you're looking at, and then you hit the right arrow to go into the directory that's on the side, mm -hmm. All then right. you will get a list of files. You choose the file that you want to run, hit enter. All right. So, for example, right now, if I want to try something like uh, Arkanoid. All right. So, I'm going to hit Shift M to mount. I got to hit my right arrow to get over. And then hit Enter to launch Arkanoid.basic. Yep. Ah, look at that. That is cool. And then I can press 1 for normal. Uh, this is uh, probably a hacked version of Arkanoid. So, let me, I'm going to review that one more time. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. It is definitely an easier way to run the game. Uh, do you want to have an RGB monitor? Yes. Okay. Um, boom. Press button to start or press enter for options. This is really cool. I like the Coco SDC. So I just rebooted um, this computer. So I could either do a cold boot or I could do a dirt. Oh, see, so it's changed that. It's changed the yes. mounting. It's, so it's, in order to reset that, you're going to have to power cycle the cocoa, unfortunately. Right. So I can power cycle that to redo that. But I like the fact that if I power cycle this, I'm in the cocoa explorer. Um, 
Very, very cool. So at this point here, it's enter is to select a folder. Okay, sorting directory. Now, if you highlight it in uh, a binary file, will it execute that as well? I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> Let's see if we can launch a binary file. Again, it's Shift M to mount. Once it's mounted, I see it on the right hand side. I use the right arrow over there to highlight the file that's on the disk, which is Batgammon binary. I hit enter, and then boom, the game is loaded. So simple. Simple, simple, simple. This is a much needed upgrade to the Coco SDC because it was a very clunky way of having to do a lot of DOS based commands to navigate and pull up a directory and mount an image and then load the images. This is now almost GUI based. If we can get a mouse in here, this would be just like having a GUI at this point, I think. Um, and just make the, uh, the default double click uh, option is the mounting on the left panel and the default double click would be to um, launch on the right panel and you know just use your joystick or your Coco mouse to navigate your SDC and then boom you've got a fairly sleek and modern interface to what was already a very cool accessory. The Coco SDC has been a great peripheral to have, and I've enjoyed having it now for almost a year, um, but it's now just gotten a lot better thanks to the SDC Explorer as well. So great job, Guillaume. Big round of applause for Guillaume Major for continuing to not only to develop it, but to continue to make it better over time. So much appreciated. David, thanks for being here. My no problem, sir. Co-pilot, my partner in crime, uh, <laughs> my cocoa nut, and that was really cool. And it was pretty easy because I was able to do it. <laughs> and if I can do it, anybody can do it, right? So, what do you got to do? You need two things. You need one disk image to update your firmware, which you get from the Coco SDC website, and you click on latest firmware. I'll put a link in this video. Once you've updated your firmware, you then want to create the autostart.cfg file to mount the SDC Explorer.dsk file. You put both of those in the primary root folder of your SD card. So you basically want to put couple files in there. You want to put one file in there for the disk image of the firmware updates. You want to run the firmware update. You don't necessarily need to have that auto mount like I did because once you've done it once you don't really need it again until a new firmware comes out. I just did it for number one as a, uh, as a test to see if it even worked and number two for convenience because I knew I'd have to go through it at least twice. Um, so yeah you can auto mount the SDC uh, Explorer in disk zero with the startup config file and if it's there and it's mounted the latest firmware will automatically launch it um, we need a new firmware that I, I, I almost say we should bake in the SDC Explorer to the firmware but I would I would imagine that the release cycles are probably different so the firmware might only get updated twice a year whereas the software for SDC might come like quarterly or monthly however you know new ideas are um, come to it. So I can see the pros and cons of kind of integrating them and keeping them separate. The way it works now, super simple, super duper simple. It auto starts. Not only did it auto mount, I thought it was just going to auto mount and I would have to manually run it. It auto mounted and it auto started. So now your Coco SDC uh, is working like an Atari Max cartridge. And if you've ever seen the Atari Max cartridges where you plug in a um, SD card full of ROMs and you, you use a menu to launch your ROM image in your uh, retro game console, this is working just like that now. So it's very, very cool. Very cool feature. All right, guys. I've talked way too long, but that's nothing new. Uh, and we're done. I just I want to do this one more time. I want to turn it off. I want to turn it back on. I just want to watch that little thing spin around. And boom, look at this. This is freaking awesome right here. This is awesome. I don't care what you say. This is awesome. If you don't think this is awesome, just, get, just go away. Go away. We don't need you. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you, David Ladd, for being here. Coco forever. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.